Hi guys, it's William Angel here, and I'm back with my project to review every single episode of The Simpsons. Today we have season 2 to look forward to, and looking forward to it, I am. In terms of what I expected from the season going in, I expected it to be a kind of transitional period for the show. It is obviously a very important season, and I'm expecting it to build on what the first season did, and frankly improve the quality and the animation and pretty much everything. So yeah, I am expecting a pretty solid improvement from this season, which is why I'm looking forward to watching it so much. Once again, I'll be going through, episode by episode, giving you a bit of trivia, my best moment from each episode, as well as my overall thoughts on it, and a rating from 1 to 5. Once again, thanks to the Simpsons Wiki for helping me out with a lot of information here. I literally couldn't have done it without you, so thanks a lot for that. Now I don't have much else to say. Let's go on to reviewing some episodes, shall we? Season 2, Episode 1, Bart Gets an F. Bart is at risk of failing the 4th grade, so he decides to enlist Martin as a tutor to help him pass a vital test. Some trivia is that this is actually the episode with the highest ratings in the show's history, putting around 33 million viewers when it first aired. And the best moment for me was the ending, it is a classic. I give this one a 4 out of 5. This episode was just very solid, it thrived on its characters and the interactions between them. Bart's relationship with Homer is handled well, showing how there was easy distractions there at home for Bart to use if he wanted to. As well as that, we also get some good moments with Martin and Mrs. Krabappel, who both complement Bart's story well. As for the ending and why I like it so much, it's just that you want to see Bart succeed, having his work being built up throughout the entire episode, and when you see him fail at the end, it's just a devastating moment. Of course it does all work out in the end though, and to be honest I'm kinda glad it does, Bart deserves a happy ending after watching him struggle for pretty much all of the episode. There is an argument that this could be a 5 and I would never say no to that, but in my opinion, when you factor in the only okay jokes, it can drag this a touch. That is why I would not pill up there with like the classics of the series or anything. Season 2, Episode 2, Simpson and Delilah. After Homer tries a new hair growth formula called Demoxinol, he gets a full head of hair, which wins him a promotion at work. The title of this one is a reference to the film and opera, Samson and Delilah. The best moment was the staff meeting, where Mr Burns confuses Homer with some great businessman. That kind of sets the dynamic that we'll see between them a lot throughout the series. The rating for this one is a 5 out of 5. Now I must admit that this is only a mild 5 out of 5, but I just like that this episode tries something different. The whole miracle hair growth formula. Getting Homer promoted to a high standing job is about, is about as unrealistic as the first two seasons of the show get. Also, Carl is a cool character that you don't find out the motivations for until right at the end. They never made a big deal out of the fact that he's gay, which for a time was unusual. The ending is very status quo, but the story was set up for that all along, as we knew that Homer was not qualified for his new position. There are some funny bits here as well, mainly towards the start of the episode with people's reaction to Homer's new head of hair. So yeah, this one scrapes a 5, just because I like that they tried something different really, and I think it works well in the main. Season 2, Episode 3, Treehouse of Horror. Like all Treehouse of Horror episodes, it is made up of three spooky tales, which in this one are Bad Dreamhouse, Hungry and a Damned, and The Raven. Some trivia is that this is actually the only Treehouse of Horror episode that uses the treehouse motif, despite the word being in the title. The best moment for me was finding out that Homer was actually told five or six times that the house was built on an Indian burial ground. So the first Treehouse of Horror episode for me gets a 4 out of 5. Now as this is the first of the famous Halloween specials for the series, I have to commend it off the bat for being innovative and trying a new format. I like the three part mini structure as it keeps you on your toes, wondering what kind of creepy tale might be coming next. The Dreamhouse part was interesting and Homer's rant about the Indian burial ground never fails to make me laugh. The second section introduces Kang and Kodos and at first it seems like it's just going to be a typical alien abduction story but I do like the twist of them not wanting to eat the humans after all. The final section is a good parody of the raven and it just has that great atmosphere and the tone and facial expressions of Homer sell it all really well. Overall, while not the most entertaining of the Halloween specials, I still like this one. The strange settings and creepy colours that he uses, it really does have an uncanny valley feel to it. Maybe you can blame the early animation for that. I don't know. Season 2, Episode 4. Two cars in every garage, and three eyes on every fish. Bart catches a three-eyed fish in the river by the power plant, which causes Mr Burns to come under scrutiny. 
So this is actually the first episode of the show to be rated a TV-14. And the best moment for me was the Mr. Burns political TV advert. So, was this episode a flop like Mr. Burns' campaign? No, no it wasn't. This is a 5 out of 5 for me. This is a classic in my mind. It nails the political satire it attempts and really showcases how the media try to make political theatre out of anything that they can. Mr. Burns slots into the role of a corrupt politician so naturally that the story becomes engaging even if you know that he's doomed to fail. On top of all that great political satire, he also managed to squeeze out a few good character moments as well, with Marge and Lisa. It is very clever how Marge makes Blinky, the free-eyed fish, come back to bite Mr. Burns at dinner. There's plenty of good humour to be had also, such as the actor playing Charles Darwin joke and Burns trying to bribe the government official. And that TV advert is just... I love that. It's a classic scene of the series as far as I'm concerned. It's just so good. Season 2, Episode 5, Dancing Homer. Homer becomes a baseball mascot for a local team. However, success soon lands him in Capital City. So, the trivia is that the storytelling sequences inside Moe's Tavern were not originally meant to be in the episode, and they were only added on later in production. My favourite moment was the Homer and Mr Burns interactions at the baseball game. So, was this episode a flop like Homer's cheerleading career? Well, kind of, yes, in my opinion. I only give this one a 2 out of 5. So this is just another example of the writers trying to play around with the formula of the show and I usually do at least appreciate that and this time is no exception. However, I feel like things got bogged down in the tone of the story that there's not much to laugh at at all really. Homer's quick rise and fall from grace is somewhat interesting but even this feels rushed towards the end. Maybe if they develop more time to laugh and less time for the dragged out bits like Beating Gums Murphy's national anthem then this episode would have been better. Seriously. That joke went on for like over a minute. It's just, it wasn't funny in the first 10 seconds. It's not going to be funny after a minute, is it? But yeah, the episode that we ended up getting, for me, just felt boring and a chore to sit through at times. Season 2, Episode 6, Dead Putting Society. Homer pushes Bart to compete against Todd Flanders at a miniature golf tournament to get revenge on Ned. So, in the scene where Bart and Lisa meditate barefoot, they only have three toes instead of the four that they usually have on the show. Now, that might be more of a goof than trivia, but still, it's a fact nonetheless. The best moment for me was Homer and Ned's rather one-sided rivalry. So this episode gets a 5 out of 5 all day long for me. This is just a memorable episode and a somewhat iconic moment for the show, as it really does showcase for the first time the relationship between Homer and Ned. Sure, there have been little hints at it in the past, but this is truly the dynamic between them that the show would use going forward. I like how seriously Homer takes his whole mini golf tournament and how dumb his behaviour is. It even annoys Ned a little bit towards the end and really you can't blame him. Not to mention, with the ending of Ned actually enjoying his punishment of mowing the lawn, it sees Homer at least get a bit of comeuppance. The Bart and Todd side of things does get a bit overshadowed by all that stuff, but Bart's spiritual practice with Lisa is good to see at least. Well, not one of the funniest episodes of the show, there's still a lot of decent one-liners to be had here. Mainly Homer and Flanders, as to be expected. It all amounts to a very good episode. Season 2, Episode 7, Bart vs Thanksgiving. After getting into a fight with Lisa over the centerpiece of Thanksgiving dinner, Bart runs away from home. So the music that Bart sings when he brings a turkey to the table is the music of the 20th Century Fox opening. The best moment was Homer's vision where the family cruelly make him beg for forgiveness. I just found that so dark and so funny. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a 5 out of 5. Right off the bat, I like how this episode takes the time to set the scene before it gets into the main drama. Just simply seeing how the Simpson house operates on Thanksgiving proves to be interesting viewing. The snide remarks from the elderly people at the table in particular I just found funny. Obviously Bart destroying Lisa's centerpiece and running off with Santa's little helper is the main part of the episode and it's just interesting to see Bart in this type of situation. Having him pass out in the street with only the dog watching over him is quite scary really when you think about it. When he does end up getting back home, the scene with Lisa on the roof is very touching I must admit. And it is good character development for the pair of them. Moments like that are what makes the first few seasons of The Simpsons what they are and just so special really. I also found out to be a number of good jokes here like Bart appearing on a TV parade as a flash in the pan character type of thing and the relatives of the old folks wishing that they could be there. All in all, it amounts to a very good episode. Season 2, Episode 8, Bart the Daredevil. After seeing a Daredevil perform live, 
Bart decides to follow in his footsteps, which leads to him doing very dangerous stunts. So, this is creator Matt Gronin's favourite episode of the show. As far as the best moment goes, it is Homer jumping the Springfield Gorge. This is another 5 out of 5 for me. It is a great episode indeed, but also one it's kind of tough to talk about for me. There's actually not that much going on other than Bart watching and trying crazy stunts. Sure, it is entertaining enough on its own, in a way, and the episode does take that premise and absolutely runs with it. It's just so over the top that it's kind of impossible not to get suckered into the madness. The scene at the gorge with Homer and Bart's moment, followed by Homer falling down, is just perfect. It's an iconic moment for a reason. And the fake out with the ambulance, that makes me laugh every single time. So with all this taken into account, it's not the most consistently good in terms of jokes, but there's still enough great moments here to make this a fight. Season 2, Episode 9, Itchy and Scratchy and Marge. After watching Itchy and Scratchy, Maggie strikes home with a mallet. As a result, Marge vows to end violence in cartoons. So, some rather underwhelming trivia is that this episode marks the first appearances of Cy Chamel and Roger Myers Jr. That is the best that I could find for this one. There wasn't much trivia available, unfortunately. The best moment was the new Itch and Scratchy Love and Share opening. So yeah, this season is on quite a roll at the minute. It is another 5 out of 5. To start off, I just think that this is a brilliant plot that is filled with lots of satire and parody. Marge's whole crusade against cartoon violence not only fits her character, but also gives a good moral about how people are quick to jump on bandwagons. And that is more relevant than ever right now, believe me. Using Maggie as the one to kick this world off was also a great idea, and the whole psycho parody is one of my favourite film references in the entire show. As mentioned before, censorship is made out to be silly here, which is rightfully so in my opinion, but in typical Simpsons fashion, they also do show another side to the argument. The montage of the kids going outside is well done in showing that maybe it's not the best idea to just stay inside watching TV all day. I do appreciate how the episode gets you to think about these issues on multiple fronts, rather than just jamming one message down our throats. Add on to that thoughtful plot, there's some funny moments as well which makes this an easy five in my book. Season 2, episode 10, Bart gets hit by a car. After Bart gets hit by a car, his family files a lawsuit against Mr Burns. So just before we move on, that title man, come on. That's got to be one of the least creative titles in the show's history. Anyway, I digress. On to the trivia. Mr Burns offers Homer $500,000, which is what Homer would have actually got even if he had won the court case, as Mr Hux gets 50% of the one million settlement anyway. So yeah, should have taken the money, Homer. The best moment was the Bart and Mr Burns testimony in court. All things considered, this is a 4 out of 5 from my point of view. The word that was summing this episode up for me is just solid. The jokes were solid and the plot was solid and so was the characterization. Everything was solid. That being said, not actually a lot stands out about this episode after finishing it. But that is just my initial impression, so it's going to be different for everybody of course. I guess you could say the most important thing that this episode did was introduce Lionel Hutz and Dr Nick. I love both of those characters by the way and they do a great job here of bringing in that shadiness which drives Homer and Bart to lie in court. I must admit that I'm not a big fan of this ending in the third act. It all kind of it was a bit too sappy for my taste and it felt too rushed to have any real impact. The last thing this show needs is another Marriage Crisis episode, let alone a tacked on one. Season 2, episode 11. One fish, two fish, blowfish, bluefish. After trying the new sushi restaurant, Homer eats a poisonous blowfish, leaving him only 24 hours to live. So the ending of this one with Homer eating pork rinds is actually recycled animation from the season 1 episode, Moaning Lisa. The best moment was Homer quickly going through the five stages of grief. So I give this one a rating of 4 out of 5. After you get Homer's diagnosis, the story after that is pretty much entirely devoted to Homer's relationships with his family and friends. In fact, the whole premise that he is dying feels like an excuse to expand on them. That is fine though because as it is obvious that Homer would not really die, we needed a fun ride along the way showing just how Homer would react in that scenario. The characterization that we do get throughout it's pretty good. I particularly like the scenes devoted to Homer and Abe. It's good to finally see their relationship get portrayed in a positive light. To go along with that pretty good story is a fair share of funny jokes. I would not call any single one hilarious in particular, however a few got some light chuckles out of me. Season 2 episode 12, The Way We Was. When a TV malfunctions, 
Marge and Homer tell their children the story of how they met. So, the song Close to You by the Carpenters becomes the song of Homer and Marge's relationship throughout the whole series. And the best moment, or moments really, because there are plenty of them, is just the chemistry between Homer and Marge. So for me, this one gets a 3 out of 5. Now, to some, that rating might be somewhat controversial, as it does have a classic status among many Simpsons fans. However, I consider this to be a solid episode, no more than that. Now, I must premise my thoughts by saying that I've never been really a big fan of flashback episodes, so maybe this is partly my bias talking here, but just to sit down and watch this one, I never found it that enjoyable. For what it was trying to do, I admit it does well. Seeing how Homer and Marge met is very interesting, and it is something that we probably needed to see at some point. And something about the chemistry that they have just makes you totally believe that they hit it off right away. Love at first sight is truly what it was between Homer and Marge. Even though he's definitely like a pompous guy, I've always found Artie Ziff as an entertaining character for some reason. Don't ask me why, but I just feel that he's always got a lot of good lines and jokes in. But all in all, it's just not quite funny enough. As someone who is too young to get that 70s nostalgia, it feels a bit flat in parts. Season 2, Episode 13. Homer vs Lisa and the 8th Commandment. Homer gets a legal cable, but Lisa doesn't approve and fears that he will go to hell for violating the 8th commandment. So the trivia here is that the blackboard gag refers to Le Bartman. This was a dance created by the 1991 music video Do Le Bartman. The best moment for me was just the whole way that Cable is portrayed. I love how it's depicted as just being full of useless sales channels and gossip channels and you know what, that isn't even far from the truth either. So does watching this episode make me want to go to hell? Not quite, but it's still not the best really in my opinion. 2 out of 5 is a rating for this one. For a start, the whole religious moral that was hanging over this episode I just did not really like. Sure, it's fine to say that ceiling is wrong, however, the way the issue is presented is not the best. It is made clear that the only reason that Lisa started to care about the issue is that she was scared of going to hell, and the fact that the family has used stolen things in the past only reinforces that point. So because the main message fell flat for me, that meant the whole, that the whole tone of the episode fell flat. Not to mention that I think the whole episode's humour was below par, as well, to say the least. One thing I would say in the episode's favour though, in the interest of fairness, is that it was paced quite well, and getting the most of the town in on the act at the end was a nice surprise. Season 2, Episode 14, Principal Charming. Homer tries to sell up Skinner with Selma, but Skinner falls for Patty instead, making Selma feel envious of their love. So some trivia that doesn't actually come into play till much later on, but just give me this one, okay? Patty is actually a lesbian, as revealed 14 seasons later, which would maybe explain her reluctance to date Principal Skinner. The best moment for me was Homer trying to find Selma a day in that Terminator style. So, this episode for me was very middle of the road, and as such, it gets a 3 out of 5 rating. It is good to at least branch out for a story and focus on the extended family rather than just the main group. I think that was needed for a change, and the show only goes more deep in that regard as time goes by. This is also the first hint we get at Selma's long-running arc of trying to find a man. Patty actually falls off a lot after this episode, and I can't even remember the next spotlight episode she gets, if she even gets one at all. But hey, that's not for this video. So, like the previous few, this episode was just a bit lacking in jokes for my taste. But at least the interactions between Skinner and Patty are interesting to watch for the most part. Season 2, Episode 15. Oh brother, where art thou? Fearing death after a heart attack? Grandpa Simpson tells Homer about his half-brother, Herbert Powell, who just turns out to be rich. But some more trivial is more like a mistake. During the McBain movie scene, the villains scream in agony before McBain even opens fire. The moment that I found the best was Herb making his employees praise Homer over the phone to Bart and Lisa. So this is a 5 out of 5. This is just great. It's as simple as that. The way that it's put together makes it feel almost like a mid-classic era episode. The jokes are just very frequent and very punchy. There are too many to name off the top of my head. Herb is also a nice character, played very well by Danny DeVito. He really managed to make him very likeable, and watching him bond with Bart and Lisa is fun to see. Sadly for him though, once Homer got involved with his business, he just knew that it was not going to end very well. Just chalk it up to another example of the Simpsons family never being able to win, I guess. At least Herb made such an impression with this episode that we will see him again in the future, so that's something to look forward to. Season 2, Episode 16 Bart's dog gets an F. After Santa's little helper gets in trouble for destroying things, the family enrolls him in an obedience school. 
So, in the end, it says that Santa doesn't help a bit bot, but Homer didn't mind. However, this actually happens in a later episode, and it is actually a major plot point, and the family very much do mind. The best moment for me was Homer's freak out over Santa's little helper wrecking his new sashin shoes. This one is a 2 out of 5 for me. I don't actually have a lot to say, other than that. I just found it a slog to sit through to be honest. There were hardly any jokes told and even the ones that were fell flat. The whole Bart and Santa's little helper story is not bad and produces a few nice moments but it was still very predictable. It was predictable both in how the dog kept destroying things and how he learned all the tricks at the last minute. This is one of the most boring episodes so far of the whole series for me. Season 2 episode 17, Old Money. Grandpa Simpson falls in love with B. Simmons and after her sudden death, she leaves him her life savings of $106,000. So, some trivia here is that Darth Vader and the Joker, of all people, are seen waiting in line as candidates for Grandpa's money. The best moment for me was the bit with Homer and Abe at the casino. So, another middle of the road one for me and as such it gets the middle of the road rating of 3 out of 5. They were clearly going for a more character driven, emotional type of story here and for all it does, it does that well. We get the best look at Grandpa that we've seen so far up until this point in the show and it balances that well with some solid social commentary about how the elderly are often treated. It also ties back into the ending in a nice way, with Abe doing up the home for everyone. B is a nice enough character in the brief time that we see her for and because of that, it's kind of easy to buy how A falls straight away for her. So, in the end, it all adds up to a solid entry, but not a spectacular one. It does lack standout moments, and the joke's are not the best, which holds it back a bit. Season 2, Episode 18, Brush with Greatness. Marge's interest in art is revived when Homer finds her old portraits of Ringo Starr. Soon, she gets a job painting Mr. Burns. The style of Homer's workouts here are similar to the training montages in Rocky, and the best moment for me were all the Mount Splashmore scenes at the beginning. That section was just very funny to me. So, this one is another 3 out of 5. And you probably know where we're going with this. This is yet another episode that falls into the solid but not spectacular category. It was not massively funny, other than the previously mentioned Mount Splashmore section. But finding out a bit more about Marge's talents is always welcome. Obviously the episode is well known for having Ringo Starr, which was the big coup for the show at the time, no doubt. That being said, to me, his appearance doesn't really do anything to stand out. Guest stars have been and will be used better many times in the show in the future. Overall, as is typical for the last few episodes, this one is not bad, just simply forgettable. Season 2, Episode 19, Lisa's Substitute. While Lisa's teacher, Miss Hoover, is all Phil, Mr. Bergstrom takes over the class. So, some trivia here is that this is the first episode to ever to use a short opening sequence. The best moment is the You Are Lisa Simpson paper, so it probably comes as a shock to no one, but in my eyes, this is a 5 out of 5. Now, what can I say about this one that other people have not already said before? Yes indeed, there have been whole essays written by people about why they think this episode is just so great. So I'll just give my overall take on it. Yes, the relationships it explores are handled very well, and you can tell the writers put a lot of work into it. Lisa does seem real here, just a kid looking for a role model. And the way in which Mr. Bergstrom is presented, it's easy to see why she views him as that figure. And towards the end when he leaves, she's understandably upset at that. But that piece of paper that she gives him is just so simple yet so good. A really powerful moment. In terms of the whole Lisa-Homer dynamic, the flaws in Homer's parenting style that were already present in the series were just expanded on. I personally appreciated that they added the scene of Marge telling Lisa what she sees in Homer. It helps to reinforce that, despite his flaws, he really is a good guy who cares about his family. The fact that we get that scene so early on, in my opinion, makes the end where they make up all the more sweeter. In terms of jokes, they are okay, they're not the funniest ever, but we do get a fun B-plot with Bart. But to be honest, when you do the main story this well, you can kind of get away with it being subpar in the humour department. Season 2, Episode 20, The War of the Simpsons After Homer gets drunk at a dinner party, Marge is outraged and signs them up for a marriage retreat. So some trivia for this one is that a scene with Edna Krabappel trying to reunite with her estranged husband Ken Krabappel was cut from the episode script. I kind of wish that was kept in to be honest, it would have been interesting to see. The best moment for me was Homer's recollection of the party. I pronounced it to be the most whimsical jape of the season. So all in all I found this one to be about a 3 out of 5. This is a tough rating to give because I find that the main marriage crisis plot drags a bit. We've seen it done better so many times before, 
and it even ends in a kind of unconvincing way. Homer just kind of throws back the fish and suddenly everything is great again. It just has no impact for me and I don't really believe it to be honest with you. The grandpa subplot however fares a bit better. Seeing him babysit the kids is interesting and I like the twist at the end when he faked his cry. It's nice to see a bit of Abe's mischievous side from time to time. In fact to go along with that there are quite a few good moments sprinkled in which helped the episode be more enjoyable to me than it would have otherwise been. Season 2 episode 21 Three men on a comic book. After scraping together a hundred dollars with Millhouse and Martin's help, Bart buys the first ever edition of Radioactive Man, but they soon end up fighting over it. So the trivia here is that Otto's idea for a comic book, Bus Man, was actually made into a real life comic for the Simpsons comic series. My personal best moment was the over the top way that the boys decide who gets to keep the comic. So is this episode priceless? Yeah I think it actually is. A 5 out of 5 all day long for me. Now as that score suggests, I enjoyed the episode from start to finish. Speaking of that start, it goes straight in with the whole comic book convention which kind of sets up the premise for the whole plot. Everything from there flows well and organically as the stakes are gradually raised until we finally get Bart, Milhouse and Martin in a treehouse with the comic. Speaking of those scenes, I just love how over the top it all is. Seeing Bart go mad is maybe a bit convenient but it's still a way to bring some much needed conflict into the story. Other things done well here are the parodies and pop culture references. They are right at the forefront in this episode more than that we are used to seeing. It is all very season 3 feeling. In fact you could say this episode does a lot to set the stage for what season 3 and beyond were gone to become. And that in its own needs some praise. As far as the humour goes I found it funny enough. There are enough things going on to keep me entertained throughout. I mean this is comic book guy's first appearance for god's sake, that's got to count for something right? Season 2, episode 22, Blood Feud. After Homer discovers that Bart has a rare blood type that could save Mr Burns' life, he convinces Bart to give blood with hopes of a cash reward. So although this is actually the season 2 finale, this episode wasn't originally meant to be, it was supposed to be Stark Raven Dad by production order instead. So the best moment was Homer's attempt to get the letter back by claiming to be Mr Burns. So the last episode of the season gets a 4 out of 5. So this is yet another chance for Mr Burns to shine in this season. I can't say I'm complaining though. It is enjoyable throughout and it even gives a little change of pace with Smithers actually being disturbed by what Mr Burns ordered. Seeing him stand up for the people who saved Mr Burns' life is good to see. I also liked how they poked fun at like the traditional moral ending by saying that it was just a bunch of stuff that happened. The whole letterbox scene with Homer trying to get back his mean letter to his boss also deserves a mention. It reminds me, personally, very much of a similar scene from The Flintstones. Now I don't know if anyone else made that connection but I did watch a lot of the original Flintstones back in the day. But anyway, back to the main point at hand. This episode was definitely a pleasant surprise to me. I almost gave it the max rating actually but it was just lacking that memorable quality that some of the other ones had. So that is all the episodes are reviewed and this is my summary of season 2 as a whole. The overall average rating that it gets when I average out the episode score is 3.9 which, which is 0.4 up from season 1 which is kind of what I expected to be honest with you. My top 5 episodes of the season was Lisa's Substitute was the best, Hitchy and Scratch and Marge was second, Oh Brother Where Art Thou was third, Three Men and the Comic Book was fourth and Dead Putting Society was fifth. Now if I was going to do an honourable mention then two cars in every garage would be on there because that was nearly number five but hey Dead Putting Society just sneaked it for me. My bottom five was Bart's Dog Gets an F was the worst, Homer vs Lisa and the Eighth Commandment was the second worst, Dancing Homer was the third, Principal Charm was the fourth and Old Money was the fifth. So with all that yet another season of The Simpsons is done. To be honest I really just enjoyed sitting down and watching these classic Simpsons seasons again even if we not quite yet got to the peak. That was the whole reason why I wanted to do this series in the first place. Any excuse to watch some classic TV right? And as the rating suggests I did see this as an improvement over season 1. It was just more fun in general and you could see that the show was really starting to get the grips of itself. Episodes like Lisa's Substitutes showed that they knew exactly how to make their characters tick. And ones like Free Men in a Comic Book laid a lot of the groundwork for the upcoming season so so yeah, in conclusion to this season, it still maintained a lot of the heart that season 1 had while becoming even more entertaining and referential. 
I look forward to coming back with Season 3 to see if that took the show to the next level, which I suspect it will. Thank you to anyone that stayed till the end, and see you around, guys.